let us uh, continue with the discussion you know, from where we left. So, uh, we are looking at the Bising problem of an active load differential amplifier where we concluded that if you are looking at a DC bias point of an active load common source amplifier, we know that this DC point is uh, not very well controllable because it depends upon so many device parameters k n, k p, lambda and lambda p ratios. And therefore, uh, if you are fabricating it in a simulation, you may be getting some value, but after fabrication you will be getting completely different values and for different versions or different uh, copies of the same circuit, the values can be very different and uh, it cannot even guarantee that the transistors will be in saturation. So, we need to take help of some other biasing schemes with the help of which I can uh, ensure a proper DC biasing point over here. So, that technique is called common mode feedback, where we take the advantage of a uh, differential amplifier with current mirror load, which is having a well defined DC bias point. So, let us visit our uh, differential amplifier with current mirror load in order to be used as a common mode feedback unit. So, here we know that if you are pumping a DC bias current I bias into M 5, the two transistors are going to think I B by 2 provided you are having same DC bias condition for M 1 and M 2 and M 1 and M 2 are well matched. And therefore, both these transistor M 3 and M 4 are also going to have same I bias by 2, I B by 2, I B by 2 in both of them. And the I B by 2 flowing in M 3 is going to establish a certain V S G for the transistor, which is basically going to be copied by M 4, the same V S G apply for the M 4. Therefore, this load acts like a current mirror. The M 3 establishes a certain value of V S G, which is enforced by the I D by 2 provided by the bias current and provided by the symmetric biasing point enforced at the gates of M 1 and M 2. And now, if we also look at the other terminal of the M 3 and M 4, the source terminal, they are at the same potential. As a result, the V S G of M 3 and M 4 is at the same potential. The transistors M 1 and M 2 are trying to enforce the same current into them. Therefore, the I D of M 3 and M 4 is going to be same, V S G is same and therefore, the V S D also must be same. That basically ensures that the V S D of M 4 is exactly same or very well matched with respect to V S D of M 3. Therefore, V D of 4 must be very close to V D of 3, ideally equal to the V D of 3 if these two transistors pairs are very well matched. So, uh, differential amplifier with current mirror load is self biasing. So, it provides an output DC point which is well defined, which is equal to the V S G of M 3. And therefore, we can take help of the differential amplifier with current mirror load to bias our fully differential amplifier, which is not having a well defined DC bias point. So, let us uh, look at the overall solution that we are going to apply. So, let us draw our fully differential amplifier once again. call this m 1, m 2, m 3, m 4 and call this m 5. So, assume that the gate of m 5 is anyway biased with the help of a current mirror and not drawing all that. And now, the first thing that we need to do is to find out or extract the common mode voltage or the common mode DC bias point for the differential amplifier output. I am assuming that the input DC points are same and both the sides are well matched you may be having some signal applied to both M 1 and M 2. So, on the top of the DC bias point, you may be having some signals as well. So, you are having the V G of M 1 and M 2 same, the DC bias same and on the top of that, you may be having some V 1 and V 2 arbitrary V 1 and V 2 small signal. And as a result, we know that the differential signal will be V 1 minus V 2 by 2, common mode signal V 1 plus V 2 by 2 and we assume that the common mode gain is uh, poor, therefore, we do not consider the common mode signal coming over here. Let us consider the differential signal coming over here. So, call it 
uh, VD, v, uh, VOD uh, plus and VOD minus. So, you will have some differential signal coming over here and uh, if I want to get the common mode signal. So, you are having VOD say plus the common mode level, it can also have DC plus AC. As I said, if the common mode gain is sufficient, it can also lead to some common mode signal over here. So, it may not be just a DC, it can be suppose you know, some common mode signal V C M plus uh, V C M. So, assume that not only DC, but you also have a common mode uh, AC signal. So, if I want to extract the common mode signal, I can take a resistive divider and at this point, if I assume this voltage to be V O 1 and this to be V O 2 that is we can write down the equation for this particular node. So, if I write uh, this as say V t, what is the V t? So, for that I will solve the K C L in this direction. So, you just have uh, K C L being solved over here. So, I will write V C m minus V O 1 upon this r that should be equal to the V O 2 minus V C m upon r, r r being equal we can say that the V C m is going to be V O 1 plus V O 2 by 2 sorry V O 1 plus V O 2 by 2. As a result if you are having an overall common mode and differential signal we can say that the central point over here is just going to capture the common mode signal and that is what we want. We want to set the common mode level. Now, we have extracted the common mode signal out of this amplifier and we want to fix it to a desired value. Now, for in the subsequent discussion I am going to assume that uh, I am not caring for the fast varying common mode signal, because then the design becomes more challenging. So, assume that uh, I can filter out any common mode small signal over here. So, in that case I will be remaining with only the common mode DC that I want. So, it will be the common mode DC level that I want to set. So, my target is to have a proper common mode DC level. So, if you are having a differential signal over here, its effect does not come over here and at this point you are getting only V O 1 plus V O 2 by 2, which is absolutely the DC bias point or the DC common mode level at the two outputs. Now, I can apply a an error amplifier over here and try to put a reference voltage V ref at the terminal and the output of this can be made to control the gate of the PMOS. And if I ensure negative feedback in this loop, the negative feedback stabilizes the input voltage at the positive terminal or close to the negative terminal or vice versa, it will make sure that these two voltages are same. So, if I ensure negative feedback, it will make sure that the two voltages over here are close together and therefore, it will ensure that V C m is equal to V ref. And in order to make it negative feedback, I also need to make sure that the polarity of increase over here is causing the reverse action to be taken by the M 4 and M 3, which again you know tries to adjust this V C m back to the prior value. So, let us see what should be the desired polarity. So, suppose your V C m because of some reasons is going up as compared to the reference voltage. In that case, I would like the feedback loop to bring this V C m or the common mode voltage back to the desired value V ref. How can it happen? So, if, if the V C m is going up and suppose the output voltage of the amplifier also goes up, that means in that case we are going to have this as positive, this as negative. So, if the V C m goes up, the positive terminal input is going up with respect to V ref as a result the output voltage over here will go up as a result the gate voltage of these two PMOS transistors will also go up. So, what should happen to the output DC voltages over here? So, if the gate voltage of these two MOSFETs go up, remember that the DC bias point provided by M 5 is fixed, the DC current flowing through M 1 and M 2 therefore, they are you know same as I bias by 2 and therefore, the DC current flowing through M 3 and M 4 they are also same as I bias by 2. And now, you are increasing the gate voltage of M 3 and M 4. So, in order to maintain the same DC current I bias by 2, what should happen to the drain voltages? They should go down, because you are reducing the V s g by pulling the gate voltage up. 
So, V s g for both the p MOSFETs is getting reduced as a result only way to maintain the same I bias by 2 current through both of them is to increase the V s d of both the MOSFETs and therefore, it will try to pull down both the drain potentials and as a result the common mode voltage will come down again close to V ref. So, we see that there is a negative feedback operation involved here if we make this connection to the positive terminal of the amplifier. So, we can call this as error amplifier which is amplifying any small difference between the actual common mode signal and the desired reference signal to which we want to set the common modes and it is controlling the gate voltage of PMOS. So, that they in turn control the DC bias point at the output. So, using this configuration where a differential amplifier with differential input, but a single ended output is controlling the DC bias point at the gate of M 3 and M 4, which in turn are controlling the DC bias point at the two outputs. We are able to establish a well defined DC bias point V ref at the output nodes. So, this is the basic mechanism involved in the common mode feedback. Now, we can uh, just replace this uh, amplifier with our differential amplifier with uh, current mirror load, where we can use these two input terminals of M 1 and M 2. The positive terminal of course, is going to be the gate of M 1, because if you increase the gate voltage of M 1, we know that this output goes up. So, for the differential amplifier with current mirror load, this is the single ended output and therefore, with respect to the gate of M 1, we know that if you increase the gate voltage of M 1, the output over here goes high. This is an in non inverting terminal, this is the inverting terminal. So, basically the midpoint V C M will be connected over here. V ref will be connected over here and the output of this amplifier will be fed to the gate voltage of M 3 and M 4. So, this is the way we can realize a common mode feedback circuit, where we are establishing a uh, appropriate DC bias for the uh, fully differential amplifier with the help of our differential amplifier with current mirror load. So, the uh, differential amplifier with current mirror load since it is self biased and it is having a well defined DC point, it can help the other guy having a established DC bias. Now, of course, what is the effect of this resistive voltage divider on the differential operation that also needs to be considered. So, if I look at the differential operation, once again if I assume that okay, the DC bias point at the gate are same well defined, differential half circuit this point will be AC ground and as a result if you look at the differential operation. I am going to draw the differential half circuit with the P MOS gates at AC ground. You have the N MOS gate receiving V d by 2. Let us keep this uh, in the view and you are having uh, the P MOS gate receiving V d by 2 and this is an AC ground and you are having the output signal over here. If you look at the uh, condition of R that is appearing between the output point and the VCM, which is not having any differential signal. So, with respect to the differential half circuit, this point will be AC ground, because there is no differential signal coming over here. So, in our differential half circuit, this R will come between these individual outputs and AC ground. So, in the differential half circuit, I will put this between the output and AC ground. As a result, for the differential half circuit, our gain can be uh, modified as a differential is equal to G m uh, 1 R o 3 parallel R o 1 parallel R, because we know that uh, for this equivalent differential half circuit is acting like a common source amplifier, where you have the uh, the R o of the two MOSFETs coming into picture between the drain and the AC ground. So, you have R o 1 over here, likewise you have R o 3 over here. V d d is effectively an AC ground for the small signal analysis. So, R o 3 over here. So, basically R o 1, R o 3 and R all appear between the output point and the respective AC grounds and therefore, the overall gain is just uh, G m 1 times R o 3 parallel R o parallel R and therefore, definitely if we want to maintain large open loop gain, we must make sure that R is sufficiently larger as compared to R o 3 and R o 1. And now, this requirement will just definitely make us think that of course, now there are going to be lot of constraints, because uh, we are looking for lower current, so that we can dis reduce about power dissipation. We also want larger open loop gain that would also enforce lower bias current and uh, that would mean very large R o 1 and R o 3. So, in one nanometer technology, if you are going for bias currents 
of the order of 10 micro ampere RO values can easily approach hundreds of kilo ohm to 1 mega ohm especially when you use longer channel lengths. So, we will see that noise constraint also enforces longer channel lengths and that would make uh, the RO 1, RO 3 pretty large and that would mean that if you really want to use the uh, resistive divider to extract the common mode voltage the R value required over here will also be very large and uh, uh, then the expected value can range from mega ohm anywhere between mega ohms to tens of mega ohms which will once again will not be very practical uh, from the point of view of integrated circuit design. Therefore, we can look for alternate techniques where we can avoid use of such resistive dividers and rather go for uh, active components only in the uh, feedback loop. So, let us look at alternate scheme where we can avoid the use of such large passive resistors in order to determine the uh, common mode feedback. So, uh, let us let us just you know have a uh, brief overview of what we are going to do. So, we are going to basically have our error amplifier itself uh, being capable of extracting the common mode signal. So, here we are relying on this R values to extract the common mode signal and then it is fed to a simpler error amplifier. Now, if we can translate or we can uh, you know outsource this common mode extraction to our error amplifier, then the job becomes simplified. We may not rely on R. So, that is the strategy we are going to use. We are going to incorporate this common mode extraction inside our error amplifier, so that we do not have to rely on these large resistors in order to achieve common mode feedback. So, let us look at that in our next module.